Hello. So, so they have a, so you, so the way you claim territories, you start cutting, and then that's yours, and that's how the scrappers deal with each other. I used to paint. I painted it before you. I, I'm glad I finished one. <laughs> yeah, I think you're ready to turn this down. Yeah. I don't get artists here that uh, pay for studios. I really don't understand that. <laughs> you know, you just kind of find a place and just go into it. The owner want, requested a painting um, because, uh, you know, uh, I'm trespassing, you know, and he, he can't get it. There's no way to get around the liability insurance. So he's looking the other way, making it an exception as long as I would paint, um, you know, kind of like a landscape painting, just showing the smokestacks that say armor. That's There's other buildings here that you could put them in. Like I've had them in related, you know, like in the wood shed, there's a little power shed back there or the other building or in the basement here. The base basements are always good because people um, don't like to go into basements because of snakes. The, the good news is that because it's so big, I feel a little safer about leaving it here, you know, because like who el if I can't haul it away, who else could, you know what I mean? So that's, it's not sort of sad, but that's kind of how I'm going you know, right now. I was uh, painting a picture of the three levels of the staircase because I like the way the light uh, shines through all the broken glass and then radiates down into this, you know, hellish, this, you know, it looks like the underworld down there, you know? And uh, thank God I had just finished the painting and that, because uh, the very, practically the very next week, I came back here and the scrappers had stolen a tank up above that had held all this coke in it and it, and it all just released right where I had set my easel up so I wouldn't have been able to finish it had that happened a little sooner. The best is when um, scrappers are trying to take something that I'm painting and I have to plead with them not to take it or just give me a few more days before they can haul it away and half the time they listen to me and they work with me and the other half of the time they don't. I also never get Edgar, you know, because he's, he's got a full-time job now. So I only can have Edgar on Sundays. Yep, so it's very bad for me. It's my, I could never replace him. Yeah, ho hopefully we could learn to sell paintings and then I could hire him all the time. <laughs> That's another bodyguard that I hired to help you out. He's your assistant. He just sits there. He's, he, he doesn't really have much of a brain. He's not real. He's not real. So don't you think it's good to have some help? No. You don't think it's good? I didn't know who he was at first. I thought he was a man. How you made that sitting? I made it uh, yesterday when I, when I couldn't paint yesterday because you, you were working. Since you have a job, I can't hire you every day. So I'm forced to make a dummy now because I can't hire you. Why are you saying that? So you are like... What do you think? It looks real though, right? Yeah, it looks real. Yeah, I like paintings that have a struggle. I, I don't want them to be like a, a photo or rendered in a real academic style. I want there to be emotion and feeling. Just like handwriting's boring if it's like, you know, perfect, you know? You need a little, like, I like to move the canvas a lot of times and paint um, in a composite style so everything's shifting and not quite in sync. Because you could do that with a photo. I want to do something you can't do with photography. The only thing that sort of is sacred now is your hand, you know. And that's what I like about painting is the surprise. I never know quite if it's going to work or not, you know. So it becomes interesting. I like my um, brush strokes to be uh, gloppy. You know, I'm kind of developing my own style finally after years and years of being sort of an academic painter. That's kind of why I always did sculpture because I, I got, I got, I didn't, I was, I was always sort of against um, being facile. Like anyone can basically learn to draw, but it's much harder to have conviction when you paint or um, an attitude about uh, technique that mirrors your concepts. You know, 
so so for this idea of painting decrepitude it's it's uh one of the ways it's conveyed is because the brush strokes themselves are so um, gloppy and drippy. So even and if you try to make it perfect, it's going to be a mess. Well, I've always had a performative element to make an art. You know, like when I was chainsawing, uh, I would dress up as a butcher, and then as I would, you know, cut with a saw, I'd save the saw sawdust, dye it red to be blood, and then all the extra pieces of wood, I'd paint like ribs or like a rack or like, you know, a chicken wing or something, you know, just a, a fillet of meat. It made a for a very nice, very popular series, but the problem is it was, it got to be like a formula, too easy to do, like a shtick, a shtick. This is a shtick too, but see, once I kind of complete a series, I do something else and I move on. This series started because I really was doing installations and I no longer wanted to um, invest and in, uh, get into debt on a credit card to build a huge room that you walk through. I'd rather find installations that someone else built that exist, like this place. I mean, this is far more interesting an installation than anything any artist could build. So I switched from um, building my own installations to painting ones I found. I just thought it was more interesting to, that, uh, to document real you know, American places that people, you know, <laughs> people built these things with their hands and now we're not even making anything anymore. I think it's really important to talk about this, stuff, you know. I, I, I feel like um, with contemporary lifestyles and then contemporary art, that everybody's like a speed artist. They want to put no time and yet they want to sell their thing like a product and get maximum dollar. And there's this sort of glibness, uh, irony, cynicism, sarcasm sells. Like I'm into more of a slow read where you have to really sit and contemplate. I want like a painting to hold up over time. Like um, I personally know that I've done something I like when I still like it 10 years later. Cindy's work has a real social aspect. She comes out of an installation performance tradition. So it's not something that just occurs within the studio. It has a real social aspect. They really have roots that go back a hundred years. The brushwork, the application, seems to be in uh, complete sync with the subject matter. There's a certain kind of both nostalgia and anger about the deindustrialization of America. You know, the men with, with meat, you know, in a way, you know, I guess on a real personal level, you could argue that uh, they're, they're kind of real victim paintings, you know, in a way, I, as a young woman, I felt like a piece of meat. This workplace series is also metaphorically about my aging process, you know, because now I'm middle-aged and I'm falling apart, you know, I suddenly can't see as well, I can't hear from all the years of chainsawing, I lost my sense of smell carving Ronald McDonald's, you know. I don't like to do what I'm told, I'm very contrary. And my job is to constantly uh, reinvent myself, push the envelope, push the boundaries between things, and help people see and consider new possibilities. <laughs>